All right, day number two for the NEMSI virtual conference. We have our question of the day. A few things we did with this question of the day uh, this, uh, this conference season. Traditionally, we put up a lot of questions that either had some controversy or were, uh, we thought were particularly difficult. This time, we're calling out individual points that will not only help uh, students succeed on exams, but also uh, reflect on our teaching in the classroom. I think we're also trying to take a little bit of a closer stand with the, the National Registry's uh, one correct uh, answer announcement and blend that together into some valuable information for educators. So in this question, an unresponsive 48-year-old male is in cardiac arrest. Your partner is performing chest compressions while you attach the AED. After you press analyze, the AED announces shock advised. While the AED charges, you should ensure your partner. And we have uh, four choices, that your partner resumes compressions, clears the patient, ventilates the patient, or prepares to switch positions. Now, I think it's worthy of noting first that the National Registry exam places a lot of weight on cardiology and resuscitation. What ultimately is uh, one chapter in many textbooks, uh, shameless plug in emergency care, we expanded it to two with a separate chapter for resuscitation just because of this point, that you can find uh, up to 20 or more percent of the exams on cardiology and resuscitation. So it's a small part of your class has a big part of the exam. So it's really worth paying attention here. On top of this, like I said, we're trying to get a, a registry uh, style question here. Now, um, an overwhelming majority picked the correct answer, resumes compressions, right? So while the AED charges, you should ensure your partner resumes compressions, right? But there still was a certain group of people, about 10%, that said clears the patient. Now, I think what we have here is a little bit of old mantra and new mantra uh, when it comes down to this. The concept uh, here that we really are referring to is not necessarily new, but it's kind of permeating uh, EMS rather than taking over by storm. That concept is compression fraction. Compression fraction, which the Heart Association says we should try and get uh, to be about 80%, certainly as much as we can, is the amount of time by percent that we're actually compressing during a code. Now, the old mantra says, okay, hands off the chest, we don't want to accidentally shock anybody, and, you know, we're analyzing. So we would actually wait while the AED charges. And, the, we're listening, and everyone's sitting there watching the patient, and nobody's doing CPR. Now, the AED is not going to, you know, initiate the shock itself. You still have to push the button. So after you say shock advised, with that provider, with their hand hovering over the patient's chest, goes back and compresses until the person with the defibrillator says, okay, clear. And that's one of the ways that we keep up compression fraction. If we look at successful systems around the country, the ones that have outstanding cardiac uh, arrest survival rates, this is one of the things that this compression fraction makes a big difference, as does early CPR, bystander CPR, early defibrillation. One of the things that I find is that while we need to uh, make sure that we talk about this, that we teach CPR as a team approach, and that we look at maximizing compression fraction, sometimes um, at a school, the, the staff is not always aligned that we bring in uh, lab faculty, that we bring in uh, guest instructors that aren't always doing this. And I think when it comes to chest compressions and some of these American Heart Association concepts, especially when we're looking to make outstanding students to be part of outstanding systems that have outstanding cardiac arrest survival rates, we can't let our guard down with little issues like this. We want our students to, to be great. We want them to pass the National Registry and it starts um, by having them understand concepts just like this. So we are um, Limmer Education. Uh, I'm Dan Limmer. Lots of ways to get in touch with us, uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We're always out there doing stuff. Facebook, you can email us. And again, always find us at LimmerEducation.com. We'll have a question posted for day number three, and we look forward to your responses. Uh, please stop by and see us.